The Philips E8 electronics kit appeared in the early 1960s as a reusable construction tool for boys, featuring two germanium transistors as the basis for eight working electronic projects. The E8 was one of the first kits of its kind and was partnered to the A20 add-on kit that allowed for 20 different projects to be built. Whilst there are already several videos on this site showing the E8 transistor radio in operation, I thought it might be interesting to see how some of the other projects worked as well. The E8 kit consists of a tray of discrete components, eight project layout cards, a comprehensive manual, plus a drilled baseboard and an assorted hardware onto which each project was assembled. As all of the small electronic components were supplied as is and not mounted in any way, some of the biggest downfalls of the kit's idea was the thin legs of the transistors and other components quickly broke off with repeated bending and straightening. I had an E8 kit myself and even managed to break the connecting wires off the ferrite rod aerial coil used for the radios as it was used so many times. The projects were assembled onto a drilled hardboard base using a selection of springs and clips to connect the wires together. These were asserted into one of the eight project cards with wires and components printed on the top face. Here we see a full set of eight EE8 cards and their corresponding project descriptions. We'll only be making six of the eight circuits here as I have no suitable turntable and cartridge for the A1 gramophone amp and the two transistor radio will sound no different to the one transistor radio as we still need a small speaker amp to bring it up to a level we can hear on the video. Let's start off with project E1, the automatic nightlight. Here is the circuit as supplied in the manual. This is what the final project would have looked like with all the components fitted to the board. Note that of the two controls with the two red knobs at the bottom of the board, only the switch on the right hand side is used and that is simply for the on off switch. As my E8 is long gone, our circuit had to be assembled using a basic bird's nest technique. Here is the assembled circuit, so let's switch off the main light. Note how the auto iris of the camera is compensating, hence the picture brightens up again. By using a torch, however, on the light dependent resistor, the LDR, the automatic light can be switched on and off. Project D1 is what they call a telltale light. Electronically, this is simply a latch which turns on a light to show that the main light has been turned in a room. Note that it only requires a brief flash of the main light to trigger the latch. The small push button seen here is to use to reset the latch. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're shining a small hand torch on the light dependent resistor. Project D2 is a light flasher. The circuit is of course an A-stable multivibrator operating a very low wattage bulb. Note that this stage the AF116 transistor had decided to self-destruct so we're using a germanium OC81 as a substitute. We can see as the two probes are lowered into the water the light is turned on. When they're removed it goes out again. B1 is the Morse code oscillator. This one transistor circuit can be heard quite loudly through the crystal earpiece. Let's now use the oscillator with a real Morse key. Here we have the E8 C1 card one transistor radio. No point in using two transistors because we're going to amplify it anyway. So here we go. Sadly we're not using the AF117 but it decided to die. So instead we're using a period 2SA202 by Sanyo which is a Japanese 1960s uh, transistor for the RF. We tried the AC, OC45, OC44 and they work fine. Um, the performance is very poor. I say it's very poor, it's not even a regenerative receiver. But for the use it has um, it's meant for a kit, you know, for boys to build. Um, if you have even a reasonable signal strength area, it works great and there's no problem at all. 
we're in a very bad signal strength area here, particularly for medium wave, and therefore there's an aerial added on Earth. Without that aerial on Earth, it doesn't matter whether you make the one transistor, two or three transistor versions, it's dead and you won't hear anything from it. So we can only pick up actually two stations. One is Radio 5 Live and the other was Radio Panjab, which I believe transmits from Crystal Palace, which is South London. So if I turn it up, unfortunately, Radio 5 Live fades as usual. So let's have a listen and see if it's still there. So that's, that's Radio 5 Live, nearly faded to nothing. Right, we now try the next station. It's a very flat tuning. Well, depends if you like that. Sounds good to me. Okay, so go back to the Radio 5 Live, see if it's any better, but that, that's all we have. So you can see basically the set works. Errol and Earth, it sounds just, it's good volume level on the earphone. But without the Errol and Earth, it doesn't work. The next step after the EE8 was the natural progression to the A20 add-on kit which presented the user with an additional selection of interesting projects. Maybe one day I'll be tempted to bite the bullet and create a second video showing some of the most interesting A20 add-on kit circuits actually working. Thanks for watching.